live tonight. And Izzy, what did he say about the whole incident? Well, Reggie, 42-year-old Daniel Jansen. Jansen says that he is still shaken and visibly emotional when you see him talk about what happened that night. He says being tased by police not only impacted him, but his two children who watched it all happen. Daniel describes the Pinellas Park police actions that night as, quote, brutal, and he says they showed no compassion. All I remember is laying in water being electrocuted for trying to save my home. Burns on Daniel Jensen's body. Four days later, Mark, where police tased him. As he says, he tries doing what any father or husband would do, protect his family's home from a grease fire flaring out of control behind his neighbor's home Thursday evening. I was calling for my daughter. I was getting a response. Um, so I came out, grabbed the hose, and started to spray her room, which is right here until I heard she was out. But with each attempt, Daniel says Pinellas Park police keep pulling him back, even though firefighters are nowhere in sight. And they kept telling me, just let it go. That's what insurance is for. And that wasn't acceptable to me. In essence, you were defying a police officer's orders. I don't believe I was. I believe I was doing what any homeowner would do, and that's protect his family and his home. When Daniel sees the fire jump onto his back roof, Daniel says he grabs the hose once again. That's when a police officer grabs a taser. As I went to grab the hose, the, uh, I heard an officer on this side of me. There was a boat here. He was in front of the boat, said to hit him, hit him, take him down, tase him. And I, I didn't know that they were talking to me or about me. I was concerned about putting water on the fire. And the next thing I knew, I was being tased. Did the officer who tased you ever warn you what he was going to do? No. No. According to Pinellas Park Police Policy, an officer will use a taser when other control techniques would likely result in a physical confrontation that may cause injury to the officer or person. But the officer must first, to give a verbal warning, he is going to use a taser. It was horrible. I was laying in a puddle of water being electrocuted. And, uh, you know, here's the people that are here to protect us. And I'm trying to protect my family and neighbors, and they're the ones that are bringing harm to me. I don't understand it. Now, Pinellas Park police officials tell us they did exhaust all options that night. They say they were simply trying to protect Daniel and the police officers from that raging fire. They also tell us they could have charged Daniel with obstruction for not listening to officers. But Hello everyone, welcome to GGN. Today is Wednesday, November 14th, 2012, and I'm Darko. So there you go. Um, I feel like a broken record because I've actually just did this video. I did about 11 minutes and uh, it froze up again, just like last week. So I just like to say whoever the asshole is that's fucking with my computer connection and hacking my network, I hope you rot in hell, you piece of scum. All right, so um, it's going to be hard because I already did all this, like I said. So for me, it's like doing it twice. But for you, it's like the first time. So <laughs> I'll just forget I just did it. Um, yeah, so uh, what they're saying is is that this person should, uh, is actually lucky because if, if, if they had given him a warning, well, then, you know, he would have deserved it. So, but, the, see, of course, the, the pigs are lying saying that they, they did give him a warning, right, which is silence. Silence is consent. So while well, the guy was actually trying to save his home, um, you know, they were probably like, uh, we're going to tase you, we're going to tase you. And uh, he didn't hear it because he was too busy trying to save, uh, save his home and protect his family that he, you know, that was, that was consent for them. So they went ahead and just tased him, electrocuted him. So that's why they say he's to serve and protect. Taser incident damages Australia police reputation. Not really sure how much of a reputation they had to begin with, but it says an Australia coroner tasked with investigating uh, the death of this Brazilian student uh, who was tasered by several police officers in Sydney in March has called for the policemen to face disciplinary action for the role in the deadly incident. It said uh, basically that uh, the actions of the police officers were re reckless, careless, dangerous, and excessively forceful while stopping short of recommending criminal charges. Uh, Curdy died within minutes of being tasered up to 14 times, sprayed with pepper spray, handcuffed, and held to the ground after running away. I think it was like with a candy bar. I think that's what it was. But the police, police officers had no idea what the problem was or what the threat or crime was supposedly uh, to be averted or had, didn't have any concern for value of life. So I have a lot of news to get to. And 
and I'm going to be moving faster, so just stick with me here. That dog may cost you $100,000 a day. So I just reported on how a mother was uh, given like a $2,500 fine by a police, basically got a ticket for uh, a toddler peeing in the front yard. Also, um, you had what? Uh, an individual fighting for the right to maintain or keep their garden because it's a violation of code. It says California's latest experiment in faith-based policy making, whatever the hell that means, is being unleashed today on the San Diego uh, public. It goes on here and it says that uh, we wish we were exaggerating and some of the new regulations include uh, owners of cars and house or dogs into, and turns them into criminals. So it goes on and says ordinary homeowners may face six years in prison and fines of $100,000 a day if they're deemed serial offenders of such new crimes as allowing sprinklers to hit the pavement, washing a car in the driveway, or conceivably failing to pick up dog poo promptly in their backyards, let alone this sidewalk. Then next up, we have Somalia, a news website run by U.S. military aims to counter insurgents. So this is a new article. It says, this site that's up here and another one like it centers on Northwest Africa is part of a propaganda effort by the U.S. military's AFRICOM uh, aimed at countering extremists in two of the Africa's most dangerous regions. So, yeah, um, it's a dangerous region because they haven't been able to, de to defeat the people, the real Somali people. So, um, like I said before, anywhere where it's a cesspool and uh, it's third world, and there's war and killing and maiming and stuff like that. It's usually a place that is is, is fighting the globalists and the Zionists. So this is what you get. Uh, but they're trying to counter that the the U.S. intelligence community. Remember, they have the uh, CIA is all around Somalia uh, in the Djibouti whatever uh, area, uh, Camp Lemnir base. Uh, Ethiopia carrying out drone strikes. So, uh, Somalia does have a war on journalism. It says exploring the media landscape in a country where going to work has become a life and death decision for reporters. So uh, basically, uh, like I said when I just did this a few minutes ago, there's not really much reporting going on. It's uh, repeaters like David Icke says. They're just repeating, regurgitating what they've been told. And if they don't do that, um, they'll get fired or their children might get killed. Um, so I'll get into that later about what I'm talking, what I'm referring to. But yeah, Somali knows about propaganda and that's why they have a war on journalists. Um, but we know that what? CIA owns the media and Jews own the CIA. So it makes sense that all of this is uh, coming uh, together like that. So even an uh, indie newspaper funded by U.S. government. There's a deep network uncovered as fake indie rag is forced to disclose funding. Um, this is actually from 2011, but it ties in after initially trying to downplay, obfuscate, and deny accusations that the Thai independent nonprofit daily web newspaper, uh, Prachatay, was in fact a U.S. funded propaganda front. And it goes on here and says it was evidence taken directly from the U.S. government funded National Endowment for Democracy website. So, and of course, they took this from the British model. That's what they do. Uh, the British model was to go around and create newspapers and they would they had to have one side then they would have the opposition side and they would just lead them to exactly where they want them to like pawns or uh, pieces on a chessboard uh, you know of course getting people to rally and then they would uh, go in there and immerse themselves in provocateur and stuff like that Jordanian textbooks put Israel on the map so it says two textbooks given out to Jordanian school children caused an uproar among anti-Zionist groups in the Hashemite kingdom recently by listing Israel on the map of the Middle East, but failing to include Jordan and Palestine. When you go down in here, it says, according to the association, one of the books that features the map warns students against smoking while the other deals with proper eating habits. So um, I'm not really sure what the big push for it is with the whole uh, anti-smoking and anti-obesity um, uh, uh, pro programs or policies by these globalists, but we know that they don't give a crap about your health because they don't want to label a genetically modified foods. They spray you with nanoparticles and chemicals every day. They pulse you with uh, electromagnetic frequencies of microwaves, um, among many other things. The books were part of a series financed by the American Foreign Assistance Agency, USAID. So who is USAID? USA is the same one that was spying in Russia and now Latin America. So the ejection of USAID from Russia was long awaited and welcome development. They've repeatedly warned its U.S. partners via an array of channels of communication that the tendency of USA to interfere with Russian domestic affairs was unacceptable, and particularly that the radicalism of its pet NGOs in the Caucasus would not be tolerated. 
um, it goes on and says that the truth is that U.S. aid hosts CIA and U.S. defense intel operatives is not deeply hidden. They play a role in every American coup, providing all this uh, support to respective oppositions. USAID also typically seeks in, uh, engagement with the local armed forces and law enforcement agencies, recruiting within them agents ready to lend a hand to the opposition when the opportunity arises for color revolutions or provocateuring, what I was just talking about. And if you rem uh, hopefully you remember, um, just recently, Iran's satellite for basically their press TV and all of their media uh, coverage went down. Basically, it was shut down by the EU and that. Um, so now Russia is having the same situation or glitches. Actually, Russia's had a few glitches that their their website went down a couple times before. Power cable failure cuts off Russia from satellites and International Space Station. So they quoted an unidentified source who said a power, power cable failure near Moscow has disconnected their specialist satellite controllers from civilian satellites. And the 10 companies that control the news. I'm going to keep moving for time's sake, but the links will be posted in YouTube's video description. Um, I have learned uh, in college about media consolidation, uh, where basically, you know, you're getting most of the opinions in the news are coming from less than 10 companies, kind of like most of the food that you get is from, like, less than six companies. So, I mean, that's all it takes when they pull the pull the plug on this uh, and they can create chaos whenever they want, like they're doing in Israel right now before the elections. Um, but uh, yeah, these opinions are usually coming from globalists and Zionists, so you're getting the same, the same thing. So you're never going to really see a real grassroots opposition voice. And when you do, um, like this, $43 trillion lawsuit I was just talking about, someone on the comment board made me aware of this. I was not aware of this. Uh, the guy, the CNBC uh, individual vice president, had his two kids, kids murdered hours after being put on the net about this story. So how about that? CNBC article on $43 trillion banker lawsuit, bailout lawsuit, has been taken down just as I thought it would be. Link goes to an empty page now on CNBC. Senior Vice President Digital Executive, two kids killed hours after being put on the net. This is from the Inquisitor. So this is real news here. Uh, the 26th, uh, CNBC executive Kevin Crim's children stabbed to death by nanny in Manhattan. This is how powerful these people are. They just, they just uh, totally neutralize um, any opposition because the, this is because people are powerful, especially someone like this, where they can actually put this out. Then all the other news agencies would try to would probably carry it, you know. Um, so they don't want that, and they could have just killed this guy. But they, you know, he's a CNBC digital exec. He's supposed to be on board with the globalists. So uh, what they do? Well, instead, they probably just uh, hire this nanny. Um, who was possibly an assassin, which I don't think it was. I think it was just a normal nanny who they pulsed the hell out of with frequencies until eventually uh, she had stabbed the two children with a knife to death. So that's how, that's how good these guys are, how freaking slick they are. They can pin uh, two different people against each other by pulsing them with microwaves so they don't have any blood on their hands. The United Nations wants control of web kill switch. Now this is, of course... This is why we really want to shut down the net because, you know, I'm not boosting myself up, but there's a lot of other people on the Internet that are doing the same thing that I'm doing. And, um, you know, this flow of information and these ideas of, you know, breaking through the paradigm, what it, you know, the, the issues that I've been talking about with Zionists and, uh, and stuff like that and, and our culture being killed off, uh, you know, those are dangerous ideas. And, usually, and thanks to the Internet, you know that's how we've been able to to get them out there so they have to they have to try to stop this it says an unfettered internet free of political control and available to everyone could be relegated to cyber history under a contentious proposal by little known united nations body so i think they've actually been uh, pushing gun control right after the election too the united the un uh, but it's all going to be in the in in the name of uh, security right so Draft of the proposal, formulated in secret and only recently posted on the ITU website for public perusal, reveal that if accepted, the changes would allow government restriction or blocking of information disseminated via the Internet and create a global regime of monitoring Internet communications, including the demand that those who send and receive information identify themselves. So that's, you know, they're going to get into licenses because when, when you can license it, uh, someone to do something, you can revoke it. Internet piracy, six strikes and you're out. This is, of course, the uh, copyright infringement uh, system. So 
the major ISPs are going to be uh, uh, following this if they're not already. They actually include temporary reductions of internet speed. Thank you.